If you're in the market for a super bike, then this could be the bike for you. It's a brand new Cervelo R5, now available, as you can see, with disc brakes. And it's my latest test bike. But before I get riding it and fit some pedals and go and hit the road, I want to give you a little first look at what makes this bike possibly a super bike. Now I use the term superbike because Cervelo is a company that is um, really well known for producing some of the finest, highest performance bikes since it launched in 1995. It's always focused on uh, race bikes, it's always worked with pro teams, always had a presence in the World Tour Peloton and really relies on the feedback from the pro riders and their requirements to really influence the design of the bikes. It's not a wide range of bikes, there's no mountain bikes, no budget bikes, it's all high performance. So the R5 sits in their range as an all-round bike, a bit like the Specialized Tarmac or Trek Monda, designed to be lightweight and stiff and ride really nicely, suitable in the mountains or on the cobbles of Paris Bay. If you want aerodynamics, you go for the S-series, like the S3 or the S5. If it's comfort you want, then you go for the C-series with the C3 and the C5. But you want an all-round uh, bike that's good everywhere, then the R-series is the bike to choose. The R-Series started with the R3, which launched in 2005, and that's a bike that introduced us to the concept of scroval tubing and pencil-thin seat stays, and really an iconic bike, one of the best bikes of the era. In 2010, the R5 came along, and its biggest USP was being super lightweight. I think it's like a crazy kind of 650 gram clay, maybe less than that, developed in a lab in California, really um, kind of high-end, really pushing carbon fibre to the max, really showing off the company's expertise in carbon fibre manufacturing. Since the R5 launched in 2010, it's gone through a number of changes and iterations, but for 2018, it's the biggest update to a platform we've ever seen. As you can see, it's a totally new frame, and for the first time now available disc brakes as the disc brake trend is continuing to spread through the, through the road bike industry. While the previous R5 focused on being as light as possible, for the new bike, the company has instead focused on improving the stiffness to weight ratio, the handling, the fit, the geometry, and bringing disc brakes to the bike for the very first time. Instead of chasing ever lighter weight frames, the company has instead shifted its focus to improving the stiffness so it can claim that the stiffness to weight ratio has improved. The previous R5 was 650, 700 grams. This new frame with disc brakes actually weighs 831 grams, claimed for 56. Interestingly, the rim brake frame is actually a little bit heavier, 19 grams extra over the disc brake version. So that helps to narrow the weight penalty associated with disc brakes at the moment. So while it's heavier than the previous R5, it's much stiffer. And most of that stiffness comes from this new massive down tube. They call it Scroval Max. They're taking a Scroval concept of a rounded square tube to the max, and it's really super wide. So that extra width, the extra girth helps to improve the stiffness. So it's stiffer at the head tube, where it's a tapered head tube, and stiffer at the press fit bottom bracket, which make the frame much more um, stiff throughout its length. The chain stays are also oversized and there's a really large seat tube as well. So it all helps to create a really stiff platform when you're pedaling, sprinting, climbing and so on. The down tube is also aerodynamically shaped. They've got a aero shape, as you can see, to reduce drag around the down tube. And that, kind of hint of aeroness on a all-round bike, something we see increasingly uh, specialised on the same with the new tarmac as well by aero shaping the down tube just to reduce drag what is an all-round bike. So not an aero bike as such, but trying to make it a little bit more aero. Another area of change for the bike is the geometry. So they really work with their pro riders, the pro teams that they work with, and they listen to their feedback. And you know what pros are like, they love the position to be as slammed as possible, as extreme as possible. They want a massive drop from the saddle to the handlebar, and that's why you always see negative rise stems on pro bikes, because they just want the front end as low as possible. So they responded, and the frame is now eight millimeters shorter at head tube to decrease the stack, but they've also lowered the bottom bracket and lengthened the wheelbase. So those create two interesting changes. So lowering the bottom bracket and increasing the wheelbase, it's still a short wheelbase by uh, race bike standards, um, but it's a bit longer than the previous bike. So that's to create a more stable uh, planted feel when you're riding at high speed or over cobbles. But by lowering the bottom bracket, your position in relation to the handlebar isn't as extreme as it might be on another bike because you're sitting a bit lower behind the handlebar. So you still get quite a comfortable position even though it's a shorter head tube than the previous bike. If you want a more relaxed position, you can get the R3, which has a higher stack just to kind of create a more 
uh, slightly more upright position. One of the original features of the R3, which helped it stand out and continues with the new R5, are the pencil thin seat stays. They're as slender as possible to create a bit of extra vibration damping, just to provide a bit of flex. Also helping to improve comfort is the all new seat post. It follows a trend that we're seeing from the likes of uh, Giant and Specialized by using a D-shaped profile to improve the amount of deflection available at the saddle, just to help improve comfort on rough road. Also helping to improve comfort is the internal seat clamp. Now that's a really common feature on a lot of uh, race bikes. And the idea of putting the seat clamp inside the frame is just to increase the amount of seat posts extended outside of the frames. Quite a neat internal seat clamp design. So there's a bolt at the back to tighten the, uh, the clamp. But it's also an extra collar just to reinforce the seat post, make sure it doesn't slip. And that's probably a pro feedback because they don't want their seat post to slip when they're smashing over cobbles. So that's a nice little touch. Also on the back of the seat post are height markers so you can easily adjust the saddle height. Another factor that would definitely help with the comfort is the disc brake version having massive tyre clearance. These are 25mm tyres but they look um, tiny in the, in the fork and the seat stays so there's plenty of clearance. I've had 28mm tyres on here and you probably go wider, a 30 maybe. That's a trend we're seeing with a lot of race bikes now. Not only is it endurance bikes that have wide tyre clearance, but race bikes have now been designed around wide tyre clearance. And disc brakes really help with uh, wide tyres. So if you want wide tyres and a race bike, this is another one to add to your shortlist. As you can see, the R5 is available with disc brakes. The first time the R5 has been offered with disc brakes. Don't worry, it's still available with rim brakes. It's offering both versions, so you can choose whichever braking system you prefer. Uh, disc brakes are really popular with Rode CC readers, which is why we've got the disc brake version in, and because it's new and a bit more interesting. So it's using the now common uh, flat mount calipers with 12 mm through axles. That's very standard now. It's good to see the industry finally settling on this uh, standard so you can safely buy a bike, not worry about a new standard coming along in a couple of years time. Now, rather than use a conventional threaded through axle system like we're seeing on most other bikes, they're actually using the Focus RAT, uh, Rapid Axle Technology System, because Focus and Cervelo are owned by the same group, so they're sharing some technology, and the through axle is borrowed directly from the Focus where we first saw it launched a few years ago. Despite its slightly daft name, it's actually a really clever and really easy to use system. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it allows much easier wheel changes, much speedier wheel changes, which is a real um, focus behind the design. So instead of a thread and you screw in the axle to do it up, you actually have a T-bar on the end of the skewer. So you push it in, twist it 90 degrees, close the lever, and you're done. So to undo it, you open the lever, twist it 90 degrees, and pull it out. Really, really easy. It takes a few goes to get used to it, especially if you're used to a normal threaded uh, through axle but once you get your head around it it works really quickly and i found it really speeds up wheel changes it's nice to see Tavello using it i think it's a really smart system i thought it was a smart system when i first saw it many years ago at eurobike and it's a shame i haven't seen it uh, more widely adopted really right enough about the frame set let's talk about the bike and this bike as pictured as sold now costs seven thousand two hundred and ninety nine pounds and for that get a very lovely sram red etap group set ETAP, as you probably know, is a wireless electronic group set with hydraulic disc brakes, flat mount calipers with 160mm rotors front and rear. The best thing about ETAP, the smartest thing, is that the batteries can be unclipped and uh, removed, so you can take both batteries indoors and charge them easily. I like the fact that the crank set is power meter ready. So basically this is SRAM's idea to make it easy to upgrade to a power meter. So rather than having to ditch the whole crank set and replace it with a power meter one, you can just replace the spider so you remove the spider, put a power meter spider on, and you're ready to go, you've got power on your bike. You could make a, a case for Cervelo just putting a power meter on as standard at the price point, maybe increasing the price a little bit, but they haven't, but made a sure done on what is essentially a race bike. The wheels also come from SRAM's uh, sister company, Zip. These are the 302 uh, sort of budget focused uh, rims. As you can see, there are no dimples on the rims. They're designed to be a bit more uh, economical so they've removed the dimple to save a bit of cost they're still made in the USO, so they're still made the same high standards we're used to from the company but by foregoing the dimples they save a bit of money the tires fit to this bike are the continental grand prix a mid-range tire a shame not to see a high-end tire on a bike like this considering the rest of the spec looks really good and on the money as you expect for a bike of this price they're 25 mil wide but as i mentioned earlier you can go wider 28 possibly 30 so if you want more comfort from your r5 you can definitely add it not only has cervello developed an all new frame set for the r5 but it's also developed a new handlebar and stem just for this bike as you know aerodynamics are increasingly important and the frontal surface area is really key to reducing drag on the whole bike so it developed a new aerodynamic shaped handlebar 
the Hanabar and the stem are both made from carbon fibre and there's internal routing for, um, for mechanical and electronic group sets. But as this is a wireless group set, there are no cables to internally route. And finishing off this build is the excellent Physique Antair saddle. I say excellent because it's a saddle I really get on well with, but if you're buying this sort of bike, you probably have a, a particular saddle you, you prefer. So it's easy to change if you don't like the Physique Antair saddle. But I do, so I'll keep it on the bike when I test it. So that's been a little first look at the brand new Cervelo R5 disc, my latest test bike that I'll be riding over the next few weeks. You can see a full review on the Road CC website in a couple of weeks time, so make sure you stay tuned to the website for that, you don't wanna miss it. As I mentioned at the top of the video, I talked about its superbike credentials, but do you agree with me? Let me know what you think about this bike, superbike potential in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this bike. And if you've got any other questions about this bike in particular, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. As ever, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed watching it. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future videos from us here at Row CC. And as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.